Hello friend, I'm Michael McCurry and this is Bible Tract Echoes. I'm so very thankful to all of our faithful listeners. Many of you have told me that you tune in day in and day out, Monday through Friday, some early in the morning, midday for others, and some late in the evening. And of course, around the world with time zones, who knows what time you're listening or watching on YouTube right now. Wherever it is, thank you so much. And if this is your very first time tuning in, welcome. And let me introduce you to a friend of mine. I'm coming to you from my office here at Bible Tracks Incorporated in Odell, Illinois. I've got Brother Abe Che with me. Had you on yesterday, and we talked yesterday a little bit about music to some degree, and uh, how God has blessed us with the opportunity to... You and I were talking before we went, we went on air. You said you don't really consider yourself a singer as such, mm-hmm. but you've had the opportunity to use some a few gifts that God's given you. And to you out there, I'd encourage you not to disqualify yourself from what God can do with you. Uh, there's so many things that God's given you that maybe maybe some talents need some nurturing. Others, maybe, uh, they're just innate that God's kind of planted in you. I'd encourage you to use those things. But Brother Abe, we, we talked a lot of it yesterday about music, and I didn't leave a whole lot of time to talk to you, kind of about you. We all have a testimony, mm-hmm. and we could take the, you know, the we all say long story short. It's always a long story short, because for you, it's 35, almost 36 years of a story, and for me, 31 years of a story. But for folks listening out there, you know, I found there's often people struggling with uh, assurance of their salvation. Mm. Mm. There are folks out there that they realize if they thought back, they don't actually ever have a salvation testimony. They were just told that they got saved. Sure. There are others that they know they're saved. They're wondering what they should do next. Now, obviously, co-pastor Grace Baptist Church, Lockport, Illinois. God's blessed. How long have you been there, by the way? Coming up on 10 years. 10 years, a decade. Praise God. But there's obviously been some growth, growth some mature, maturing to get mm-hmm. to that place. But it started with you accepting Christ as your Savior. So for the listeners out there, of course, they don't just say no Abe Che like I do, a friend of mine uh, in a singing group together. We'll talk more about that in the coming days. But tell us how you came to know the Lord. So when I think about my testimony and how how I learned about the Lord early in life, it's, it's but for the grace of God. Oh, amen. Uh, because neither my mom or dad was in church Mm. at the time. My mom was reached by a pair of, I think, college-age girls, soul winning from (laughs) Northwest Bible Baptist Church, currently in Elgin, Illinois, but at the time it was in a smaller location out in Prospect Heights, Illinois. And my mom accepted Christ as her Savior when I was three years old Mm. and started taking me to church. And... So I don't have any memories earlier than that. The only thing I remember is being in church and hearing those stories in Sunday school for the first time that now, God help us, our old hat. But (laughs) at the time when I heard them, you know, so real, so vivid and and praise the Lord for some Sunday school teachers that just gave their all every single Sunday. And I remember starting to feel conviction of the Holy Spirit about my sin and knowing that if I were to die, that I was gonna to go to hell. And I was four years old, I went to my mom, and I said, Mom, I'm on my way to hell, I wanna be saved. Mm. And my mom, a brand new Christian, didn't know how to deal with me at that age. Could someone that age even get saved? She didn't know. God gave her the wisdom and discernment to go to the assistant pastor at the church and say, how do I deal with my four-year-old son that wants to accept Christ? She was given the counsel, don't force any decisions upon him. Sure. You leave him be for a little bit. And if that conviction is of the Holy Spirit, it will not go away. And sure enough, it did not go away. (laughs) And I bothered my parents to no end. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. It was at the lunchroom table of the Christian school, Northwest Baptist Academy, and my preschool teacher at the time took her Bible, showed me how to be saved. I I knew all of it already from Sunday school, but I bowed my head and I prayed and accepted Christ at four years old. I remember it vividly, and you can be saved at that age. Yes. So Praise God. Yes, sir. I actually have a fairly similar testimony. Ended up being I went to my junior church teacher, and that that's how that that's where my testimony kind of begins. But I was very young, 
And I, I doesn't mean every, everyone should necessarily, right. um, but what a, what a blessing and to yeah. start off and, and thank God for godly parents. Amen. Thank God for even a young Christian. It's, it's sometimes we you know we say out of the mouth of babes. It's funny how sometimes new Christians are just smart enough to do the right thing. Yeah. That that that's what they do. Amen to that. And. So for those that are listening out there, as you're talking, like I'm just like jumping on little application points and all that type of stuff. But that take us through beyond that. Grew up in a phenomenal church and yes, a sir. great man of God and a man that's influenced my life and many, many people's lives. But how did you end up in the pastor? I mean, you, you have a lot of, when I say intelligence, you've worked in a secular field. You have a lot of talents, both photography, with the musical things, design. I mean, there's basically, in these day, this day and age, in modern day and all that, there's a lot of people throwing a lot of money at those type of things. But you've chosen a, a different vocation. You, you've chosen, or I should say, God's chosen. You've yes, followed on that. But t- bring us up, if you can, you've got plenty of time, bring us up to the present day on how you found God's will for you because just like there are people struggling with salvation, there's a lot of folks struggling. And let me pa- pause here for just a moment. If you are struggling with salvation, mm. I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to be a help to you. Now, what I often do is I want to get you in touch with a good local church as soon as possible, but maybe I can be your first contact. I'd love to talk to you. I'm going to give you my personal cell number. You can reach out to me right now. You can text this number. I'll give it to you real slow twice. You ready to grab a paper, pen, your phone, even open your phone right now, start a text message to Micah McCurry. Here's a number, 309-316-7244. Zero. Send me a text. If you're struggling with salvation, or maybe you just want to find a good church like the church you co pastor, Grace Baptist Lockport, text me at 309 316 7240. Now, talk to us. How did God take you from four years old mm-hmm. up to where you are now? I was called to preach during Sunday school when Amen. I was seven years old. <laughs> and got, got married at 11. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, no. Um, and I have never doubted Amen. that call. I will tell you that there were many times that I thought that God had made a mistake <laughs> because at that age, I was so shy. The thought of being up in front of people terrified me mm. and growing up under a prolific preacher like Pastor Keith Gomez, I would sit there in services and think, I can't do that. I cannot do that. I, no way. And I remember hearing my preacher and others that were wise enough to say, if God calls you, he will equip you. Amen. And you just need to simply remain a vessel willing to be used. Mm. And so I wanted nothing more than that and trusted that God would do that. And so I never had any struggles personally. I know that's not everyone's story, but I never had any personal struggles or battles with what God wants me to do. And I just simply, I've always been of the mindset that you keep doing the last thing that God told you to do. Amen. Yeah. And I try not to let my personal goals or wishes or impatience get in the way of what God wanted for me. Uh, I went to Bible college, Providence Baptist College. I completed that uh, pastoral theology degree in 2010 and then just stayed at the church there at Northwest and served for a few years there, Uh, taught a Sunday school class. And um, then the opportunity opened up when my father-in-law, Pastor Keith Harrison, took the pastorate at Grace Baptist Church in Lockport, uh, where they needed a youth pastor. And he called me and, and asked me if I would prayerfully consider it. And I did. And I, I wanted to make sure that this was not a move of convenience. Right. And so I did counsel with my pastor and others about that decision. And it was God's will. And the Lord opened that door. And I, I would just encourage any young man that's struggling with trying to find God's will for your life God is not trying to make it a mystery. He's not trying to make it difficult. Truthfully, the difficulties I believe that we face in following God's will is is completely on us. And just keep doing the last thing that God told you to do. Find a way to be useful for God's service where you're at. And it's amazing how God will simply open the door. And there are no struggles. There are no battles. God will move you from place to place. Absolutely. Let's bring it back home to why you're here doing this music project. 
I remember, speaking of timing, being very careful not to do things ahead of God's will, behind him, not wanting to do things because it's something that you desire, making sure it's God's desire for you. I remember I was talking to one of my other friends that you'll hear on the radio, Lord willing, uh, this week or next. Uh, He and I were in Bible college together. Hmm. And I remember, this would be 12 plus years ago, talking about we're going to cut a music CD together. And we Hmm. were making plans over the summer out of school, we were in a block. We had dates, possibly we were floating dates around. We had a set a song list that we were going to look at. And I, t- I leaned over to him as we were working on the project down there in the control room. Austin uh, doing a wonderful job. My brother in law works with me at Bible Tracks. For a long time friend of yours, went yes, to school sir. with you back yes, in the day. Yeah. And I leaned over to this is AJ that I'm talking, uh, talking to. AJ Nichols, you'll hear hit from him in a little while. I leaned over to him and I said, it's a really good thing we didn't do this 12 years ago. We had no <laughs> idea what we're doing. We still don't have any idea, but we 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 know a little more that we don't know. We figured sure. we, one or two things out. Uh, think of a knucklehead 19 year old trying to. Who, ah, man, I, I, I almost want to smack myself upside the head yeah. thinking about it. But to see how God's brought these things together, now being director here at Bible Tracks and bringing me together with the right people hmm. and people that I that I've been will see a decade plus of faithfulness from in their lives in different areas. Back then, we were so untested. Sure. I mean, rookies in every sense of the word. And to think of where God's brought us to, I'm excited for this. Amen. What is so far, I, I'm gonna tell you what mine is. I'm gonna see if it's the same one. We've got about one minute left here. So far, if people are looking forward to it, what's your favorite song on this new CD? We have two albums, basically, we've cut. What's your favorite song so far? So, uh, th- this is gonna sound probably selfish, um, but... We, I think, had a little bit of a surprise. None of us have, well, I shouldn't say none of us. I haven't had the privilege of singing with these guys very much prior Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. this week. And uh, we put a quick trio together with uh, uh, Brother Stephen Lesmeister and Brother Devin Ogdi. And it's just a very sort of stripped back guitar only rendition of Like a River Glorious. That's the one I was going to say. And uh, it just, it came together uh, very, very well. And we'll give God the glory for it that it did. Uh, but I'm very excited about that one. It's a good change of pace from the rest of the music that's on the album. And, uh, I, I really enjoy hymns of any kind. And so I I think that this will be a good If you're interested in this project, text the word music, that phone number I gave you earlier, text the word music, M U S I C to this number three zero nine three one six seven two four zero we'll get you some more information it'll be a few months before it's out but i want to make sure you get on the list for that all right thank you so much for listening i'm michael mccurry this has been bible tracked echoes we will plan on talking to you soon with some more members of this group god bless